course, award season is in full swing. The Golden Globes were held a while ago. Who cares? Uh, last night was the <laughs> Emmys. But the night before that, Jesus, was, the night before that, though, was the Critics' Choice Awards, a, an award show that used to be quite meaningful. I think they're barely better than the Golden Globes now. It, they're, just, they're just a bunch of pathetic uh, kind of attention people who are like, they started adding all these categories that are completely meaningless just to try to get more celebrities to come to their show. Like they started making up a bunch of BS categories that are, anyway. But... I, I know a lot of people in the Film Critics Society, right? I know, I'm, I'm friends with a lot of people in there. And so I still pay attention to what happened because again, I think they're more relevant and more legitimate than say the Golden Globes. So they had their award ceremony the night before and their winner's list is uh, mostly predictable, which is not a bad thing, with one or two notable surprises. First off, of course, was the big award. Oppenheimer, once again, took home Best Picture of the Year. Uh, that means it's building some momentum right now. It, it's looking at this point like it may be a foregone conclusion that Oppenheimer is going to take Best Picture at the Academy Awards. Uh, of course, it was up against American Fiction, Barbie, The Color Purple, The Holdovers, Killers of the Flower Moon, uh, Maestro, Past Lives, Poor Things, and Saltburn. I still think Poor Things is a movie that's got an outside shot at the Oscars, by the way. But then the one that I think is going to be surprising to a lot of people, surprising unless you watch the John Campia show. <laughs> because last week, I just said, look, uh, Killian Murphy is incredible in Oppenheimer. But man, I'm telling you, I've talked to a lot of actors who are in SAG, and a lot of them feel that what Paul Giamatti did in The Holdovers a lot of people in these award circles may think that is the best performance. And under the best actor category, Paul Giamatti took home best actor. Now, of course, at the Golden Globes, Paul Giamatti was for some reason listed under musical or comedy, and he won best actor there. Killian Mur Murphy won for best actor in a drama. At the Critics Awards, they're under the same category, just best actor for a feature film. Paul Giamatti beat out Bradley Cooper for Maestro, Leonardo DiCaprio for Killers of the Flower Moon, Coleman Domingo for Rustin, Killian Murphy for an Oppenheimer, and Jeffrey Wright for American Fiction. Again, th the surprise one there is that I think a lot of people, the popular choice is Killian Murphy. Also, it's a subjective thing to say. I think a lot of people feel that way because Oppenheimer is the better movie. I love the holdovers, don't get me wrong. But I think a lot of people are, consider Oppenheimer to be the better movie. And as great as Killian Murphy is, doesn't necessarily mean that his performance was better than Paul Giamatti's. Anyway, some of the other winners, of course, uh, Emma Stone winning for Poor Things over Lily Gladstone. Again, at the Golden Globes, Emma Stone was listed under the musical or comedy, won Best Actress there. Lily Gladstone was listed under drama. She won that. But at the Critics Society, where it's all under the same category, Emma Stone took home Poor Things. And I think she might now be the odds-on favorite going into SAG Awards. Tell you what, if Emma Stone wins at the SAG Awards... She's going to win the Oscar. If if Lily Gladstone wins at the SAG Awards, I think it go, it's a coin toss going into the Oscars. But Emma Stone took home Best Actor. Best Supporting Actor went to Robert Downey Jr. for an Oppenheimer. Again, I don't think that surprised a lot of people. Best Supporting Actress, again, no big surprise. Divine Join Randolph for The Holdovers, joining Paul Giamatti. Then they got some idiotic categories like Best Young Actor. and actor. Who cares about any of that? And here, Rob, big story of the night. I, I think are two big things. Oppenheimer takes home best picture. No surprise. I believe it's got to be the odds on favorite heading into the Oscars. I think so too. Paul Giamatti taking best actor. And I guess right alongside that, because it's going to be a very, very close race between um, uh, Emma Stone and um, um, Lily, Gladstone. Lily Gladstone. It's going to be a very tight race, but I think a lot of people thought, after the Golden Globes thought Lily Gladstone might take it, instead she did. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video, Mint Mobile. On average, it takes about 30 days for a person to break their New Year's resolution. So if saving money was on your 2024 list, your odds aren't looking that great. Luckily, I have a 100% guaranteed way to save you money this year. Just switch to Mint Mobile. For a limited time, wireless plans from Mint Mobile are $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for 15 bucks a month. I've told you guys many times that after switching to Mint Mobile, I am spending less than a third on my cell bill 
than I used to with a major carrier. Say goodbye to your overpriced wireless plans, jaw-dropping monthly bills, and unexpected overages. All Mint plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. And don't worry about having to change phones or numbers. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and bring your phone number along with all your existing contacts. So guys, to get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash campia. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. Cut your wireless bills to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. What stood out to you? What do you think? And, and is it a foregone conclusion at this point? Can we call it? Oppenheimer's going to win Best Picture of the Oscars. What do you think? Yes. I think Oppenheimer has that sewn up. But look, you know, the thing about Paul Giamatti is I think over the years, Paul Giamatti is an actor that has, he's an actor's actor, you know, and, and the, he has the great respect of, of all the actors in Hollywood. You know, I go back and I was, I was thinking about this. When was the first time I ever saw Paul Giamatti in a movie? He has a bit part in Cameron Crowe's Singles that came out in 1990. Oh my, I where he's, forgot about he's that. He's making out in a coffee house with some girl, you know, and he's got hair. Um, I produced the special features for Shoot 'Em Up, Michael Davis's Shoot 'Em Up, where he plays a great villain. I love him in the movie Sideways. One of my favorite moments in any movie is when he notices at wine tasting Thomas Hayden Church is chewing gum, and he looks at him and goes, "Are you chewing gum?" Yeah, I and love anybody, that. It, I love that scene. It, it, it's so great. But so Paul Giamatti has earned his way to get the respect of both audiences alike and 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 fellow actors alike, and I think this performance. This is an indelible performance. You know, this is like Peter Peter Sellers doing Chance the Gardener and being there. Different kind of a performance, but it's still, it's an iconic performance. Um, Paul Giamatti is going to be remembered for this movie for a long time. And as more and more people see it, they'll fall in love with it. So it's not surprising to me that he won this. Killian Murphy, however, what he's doing in Oppenheimer, I, I mean, it's out of control. He's so good in it too, but it's not as fun. You know, and I think when it comes down to it, is it who, which performance is more enjoyable or better? It's hard to say because they're totally different sides of a, of a spectrum. But, and for me, Emma Stone, again, is doing something, not to take anything away from Lily Gladstone because she was terrific in the film, but what Emma Stone is doing is so, again, it's, it's a lot of fun watching her do, play that Frankenstein's monster, essentially, even though she's not, is a it's a wonderful, joyful thing to watch and sexy too. Um, and so it's tough to say. I mean, I thought that both people deserve these things. Oppenheimer, I, I really feel that the awards are going to the people that deserve them. And either person who wins, whether it's Killian Murphy and Paul Giamatti, or whether it's Lily Gladstone or Emma Stone, richly deserved. I really feel that this year, the, the films that deserve to be nominated and the films that are winning deserve so. A deserve. Uh, couple other quick notes uh, from the uh, from the Critics' Awards. Uh, Christopher Nolan took home Best Director. But this is Best Original Screenplay. I really thought that Celine's song for Past Lives may take that, but actually they gave, the award went to Barbie. Which was interesting because it's yeah. original screenplay yeah, yeah. <clears throat> which is which is where it completely should be i agree not where the oscars are putting it under adapted but it won for best original screenplay and then under adapted screenplay uh oppenheimer uh written by christopher nolan got beat out by american fiction which is actually really interesting to see but still that's interesting. and and uh they did get the best animated category right spider-man across the spider-verse yeah but it should have been nominated for best picture not just best animated. So uh, that was the Critics' Choice Award. Again, guys, I think the big surprise there was Paul Giamatti beating out Killian Murphy. How do you see that playing into it? It's going to be really interesting to see how the SAG Awards do that because I think that's going to give us a clearer picture going into the Oscars. Hey, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called the John Campia Show Podcast available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.